hello everyone and uh, let me explain in this lecture uh, the notion of uh, state transition matrix uh, therefore we start a notion of the state transition matrix so state transition matrix the state transition matrix is uh, given as exponential matrix exponential e to the power a of t and we denote that that this matrix exponential is just this phi where is this notion coming from? Let us first uh, find out about that. If we have a scalar equation x dot equal a of x plus b u, which is the equation of our first order system tank, this is the tank u of t, this is here the wall, and if we assume that u is equal to 0, we obtain that equation that shows dynamic evolution of the height in this tank is given x dot capital x, where x at time equals 0 is equal initial condition. We know how to solve this expression by simple manipulation that this is dx by dt equal ax which leads to the x of t as a function of e to the a of t x zero okay so we see that we get exponential evolution of the system out of this form here x dot equal a of x. In the same way if we have x dot equal a of x where a is a now matrix n by n size this is the n by n we in analogous way obtain that x dot equal a of x where x is a vector and x at 0 is initial condition at x0 we obtain that x of t just by analogy is e to the a of t multiplies x of 0 in this case, E A of T is a state transition matrix or matrix exponential. Why we are saying the state transmission matrix? Because just think that three-dimensional state X1, X2, X2 and X3 are given initial condition here at x0 and this matrix transfer this initial vector of initial position this is given like a vector from this position to the following position so this position is phi multiplies x0 which is now x of t Okay, this is why it's called state transition matrix. That is where this uh, uh, name is coming from. The question is now, how do we calculate the state transition matrix or how do we find the matrix exponential? So the question is, question, how do we find we calculate
this phi or e to the a of t. We understand already that this e to the a of t matrix exponential is a matrix because phi is a matrix. We see here that phi has to be the same dimension like this vector. So if this is the three dimensional, the phi will be three by three. And we can also take, in the case of a scalar, that analogy that e to the a of t is one plus a of t divided by one factorial plus a t square two factorial plus a t cube three factorial plus and so on and by this analogy if we take e to the a of t where a is now matrix we will have for one identity plus a divided by one factorial t plus a t square by two factorial plus a t cube three factorial and so on. So this is one way. And in this way we can calculate providing that this infinite sum of all these matrices is going to converge to some closed expression. Otherwise this is completely open expression in the form of the t squared t cubed t4 power and matrix A. Therefore we need to find the general way how to calculate the state uh, 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 transition matrix or matrix exponential. Okay, and we will demonstrate that. In the case of using these series, and this way of calculating can be given by the following example. Let's assume that mx double dot is f of t, this is a standard example, and if we transform this into the velocity, we will have a z1 and z2 states, and we will have that matrix A is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, z1, z2. plus zero one by n f of t okay this is when we transfer the this above second order differential form into state space so in this case if this is our a and we are interested in calculating the e to the a of t, we will have e to the a of t is equal 1, 0, 0, 1 plus 0, 1, 0, 0 t divided by 1 factorial plus 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, t square by 2 factorial square plus higher order terms. But the claim is that this matrix will be the matrix 0, 0, 0, 0. And all other matrices are going to be 0 because a cube is just a square multiplies a. In other words, matrix exponential in this case becomes just 1, t, 0, 1. And this is the case when e to the a of t can be found in this simple way by having these 
expansion of e to the a of t in the terms of a. Another way to calculate is to use Kale Hamilton theorem. So Kale Hamilton theorem. It says that every matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. And what is the characteristic equation? So if we have a matrix that is n by n, this is the size or order of the a, we will have that p lambda is equal determinant it's characteristic polynomial determinant of lambda i minus a which is given as lambda n plus a n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 lambda n minus 2 plus plus a 1 lambda plus a 0 and all of that is equal to 0 so this is the characteristic polynomial of the n order and if we would put a here instead of lambda this equation will be satisfied. n is an order. So if a is 3 by 3, we'll have a lambda q, lambda third power plus a n minus 1, lambda second power, n minus 2, lambda first power, and then lambda 0, and a 0. In other words, this solution yields that e to the a of t is calculated as sum of the i equals 0 n minus 1 alpha i of t a of i in other words I'm going to circle this formula because this is the formula that is coming as a consequence of Kalekham's theorem and this previous statement and this formula provides the way how to calculate the matrix exponential, and this is done in following steps. First step. Okay. First step is a uh, find characteristic values or eigenvalues of matrix A. Characteristic values of A or find the characteristic equation and solve the polynomial characteristic equation to find the eigenvalues. In other words, that lambda I minus A is equal p lambda. Okay. If, for example, a is given as a 0 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1, we immediately see this is size n equal to. So, characteristic polynomial is going to be lambda square plus lambda minus 6 equal to 0. Okay. This is what it comes when lambda i minus a is calculated, the determinant of that. Which leads that lambda 1, 2 is nothing but minus 1 plus minus 
square root 1 plus 24 quadratic equation divided by 2. So one lambda is minus 3 and another lambda is 2. Okay. And the next step is to obtain these alpha i's, these coefficients here, alpha i's, and those are obtained by specifying e to the lambda of 1t equal alpha 0 of t plus alpha 1 of t lambda 1 e to the lambda 2 of t so we have a two lambdas lambda 1 and lambda 2 and out of these two lambdas we generate system of two equations alpha 1 of t lambda 2 okay which essentially when we substitute lambda 1 is minus 3 and lambda 2 is 2 becomes e to the minus 3 of t e to the 2 of t equal 1 minus 3 1 minus 2 alpha 0 of t alpha 1 of t okay so by simple inversion and solving this system of equations for alpha 0 of t and alpha 1 of t we obtain that alpha 0 of t is 2 by 5 e to the minus 3 t plus 3 by 5 e to the 2 t. Same way, alpha 1 of t is minus 1 by 5 e to the minus 3 of t plus 1 by 5 e to the 2 of t. Once we obtain these two coefficients, alpha 0 and alpha, we just generate, finally, e a of t as identity multiplies alpha 0 coefficient plus a multiplies alpha 1 of t. Okay. This expression formally leads to the 2 by 5 e to the minus 3 t plus 3 by 5 e to the 2 t 2 by 5 e to the minus 3 t minus 2 by 5 e to the 2 t and 3 by 5 e to the minus 3 t minus 3 by 5 e to the 2 t and 3 by 5 e to the minus 3 t plus 2 by 5 e to the 3 t okay. so this is the way how to calculate the state transition matrix in another lecture I will demonstrate to you that there is also another way by using Laplace transform.